Etsy has a little bit of an intellectual property problem. And so it's it's interesting, Scott, that the same team that's responsible for the handmade policy and all those kinds of things is the, the team that is responsible for the intellectual property side of this. So copyright, trademarks, all of those kinds of things. And they took down 3.8 million listings for handmade policy violations. And they are saying that last year they took down 1.2 for IP violations. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems kind of reverse based on what we see on Etsy on a daily basis. Now, taking down something for intellectual property is a much more complex problem because mm -hmm. it's not Etsy's rules. They're enforcing someone else's rules in this case, right? So you have to have certain things for that to happen versus a listing getting flagged by a human or the AI and them going, well, it's clearly not marked as print on demand, so we can just take that down. This is a little bit of a stickier situation. They said they had 122,000, almost 123,000 reports that led to 1.2 million listings being taken down. Uh, I think they said 1% of those were, were for patents. Pretty much everything else was either a copyright violation or a trademark violation. Somebody sent uh, selling something that they don't have the rights to sell. Well, Chris, I'm going to jump in here real quick. Yeah. Because I know there's, and, and someone even posted it in the comments, and I'm, I'm going to try to find it. Uh, it was right here and basically said, it's very easy to get stores banned by competitors. And this is another problem. Do you see this as potentially like, are, are those complaints coming from our competitors? Is, is this coming from someone that's like, you know what? I'm going to send in a violation on them. So that way there, they get removed because I think in the report, I think it was in the report, you had said that they're basically just not even looking. They're just kind of doing right They're They're just like, Oh, another one's flagged. Yeah. Sam, go ahead. Shut that thing down. Right. There's, there's no look. So is it that easy to basically just go, Oh, I'm going to go ahead and have a complaint because they're violating my design or they're violating, uh, something that could be, uh, you know, a trademarked item or, or something like what's your thoughts on that? It depends on what we think that people are maliciously doing. They're maliciously reporting handmade violations. Probably not because that was 6% of all of the ones, all of the reports that they got or all of the, the flagged listings that they looked at came from the community. That changes a little bit when we talk about IP. And there were some problems that I see with the IP violations. Now, what they are saying is 70,000. So a little over half of their 123,000 were reported through the, the report portal. So basically somebody like a Disney Universal Music, we know had a big crackdown. They came after all the Taylor Swift stuff right? Uh, Luke Combs got in some hot water because his legal firm went after somebody selling a Tumblr. Uh, you know, we had a bunch of these big celebrity cases. They would get reported through the portal. The other ones got flagged by the AI, right? And they do a lot of counterfeit flagging from the AI, uh, all of those kinds of things. But if, if what we're thinking is people are just reporting stuff and that will immediately get your shop shut down, it's actually not the case. And if we look at the, the numbers that Etsy is giving us from the report themselves, right? They had those 123,000 reports. 26 of those were dismissed by Etsy. They said, either you didn't give us the information, you didn't give us a trademark, right? And that's why I said, this is a little bit more complex because before they can act on something, they have to verify that you have all of the information. So you can go in and make a report, but unless you actually prove that you own the rights to that, they reject it. And they, they seem to be doing a pretty good job of that, right? If they're rejecting a quarter of those, that's a pretty good sign that the the junky ones, the ones that are not accurate, mm -hmm. are are being taken care of. Now, the other thing that was interesting here was of the other ones, only 12%. So I don't know how familiar you are with the copyright process, but let's just say, Scott, we're live on YouTube right now. We get a copyright strike on YouTube, right? Okay. Uh, Etsy comes in and says, this report's protected information, even though it's public information. It's our copyright, even though we're not using their report, we're just sharing that, right? They can come in and do that. And anybody can make a copyright claim. We can then challenge that. So if, if YouTube, for whatever reason, decides that it passes their muster, Etsy decides that it passes their muster as the person being claimed against, we can challenge that claim. We file what's called a counterclaim notice. Of this, the reports that were passed through by Etsy, so they weren't rejected, mm -hmm. only 12% of those reports were challenged by sellers. Right? So... What that tells me is if you, Scott, uh, got a copyright violation inside of your Etsy account mm -hmm. and they gave you the button, which is what they do to say, hey, I want to appeal this or I want to challenge this or I want to file a counterclaim. 
would you not file a counterclaim if you actually <laughs> owned the rights to that? <laughs> like, right. Right. Everybody would. And so what this tells me is the vast majority of those reports are accurate, at least to some extent, or people don't care enough to go in and do that, right? If you actually created the design, you're going to go in and do that because it's your livelihood. It's something you care about, right? Uh, one of the YouTube channels that I'm an admin in got a copyright strike the other day for a video that was a clip of a movie that okay. they created, Yep. right? Obviously, immediately went and said, we literally created this movie. Somebody else mm -hmm. has the rights on streaming services to show it, but it's our movie. And YouTube was like, oh, yeah, okay, fine, right? If you file that counterclaim, then to take your listings down and to keep you off the platform, they have to sue you and take you to court, right? So if you're filing that counterclaim, it means you truly believe that you have the right to sell that product. The vast majority of people who are getting copyright or trademark violations aren't doing that because mm -hmm they're selling Disney stuff and they know that they shouldn't, or well, they used the Etsy API to bulk upload a bunch of infringing products. And they just said, eh, they got that store shut down. Who cares? We have another. So, so Chris, so I know the question that a lot of people are going to be asking, cause I've asked myself this question and so have you really, why can't they create something in their AI or, you know, just in their automation that says, if you put Disney in the title, it's going to get held until you prove that you have the license to sell Disney. But what I'm hearing is you can put it up. Etsy, they, they're, they're okay with it. But if Disney contacts them and says, you need to look at that, that's our license, then they can take it down. But I can list stuff freely. Like I'm, I'm, it's, it's fine to do. I, I can do it. There's nothing, nothing that Etsy says that they're putting in place. That's going to filter that out. And I know on Amazon, you can't, you, you, the minute you put something in your title, it'll give you a flag. It'll say, nope, ain't putting that in there, you know? So why, why aren't they able to do that? Or are they, and is that part of the, the, the listings that are getting flagged? So they, they have a system apparently, and I may have misinterpreted this, but I read it four times for counterfeit goods. And it looks like in addition to the trademark copyright patent infringement stuff, which is what we're talking about here, yeah. the 1.2 million, um, they took down another million, uh, 1.45 million. So almost a million and a half listings for counterfeit. And they seem to be flagged by the AI. Now, the reason, and again, I'm putting words in Etsy's mouth here. Somebody like an Amazon, you typically are not selling used things or you're not selling handmade things as much on Amazon. I understand that Amazon handmade is a thing, but it's not arts and crafts like you get on Etsy. It is almost exclusively print on demand. And if you think about something like eBay, Scott, do you remember the concept of the first sale doctrine? So you could buy a mm -hmm. Disney cup at Walmart yep. and then wait 10 years until it was a collector's item and turn around and sell it on eBay. That doesn't infringe on mm -hmm. Disney's trademark or copyright because you purchased it and you have the right to do with it what you want. Etsy falls into a weird gray area between like purely that and what you have on Amazon, which is basically created products. Uh, or print on demand exclusively products, right? You could buy a bolt of fabric with Disney princesses on it and make pillows and sell those on Etsy. That's not a violation of Disney's copyright or trademark. So they are in a little bit of a stickier situation than the other platforms are where like Amazon, it's black, eBay is white. Etsy's in that weird gray space in the middle where they're saying, hey, we have to kind of err on the side of the seller here unless somebody reports it. The other thing is they can't proactively take things down in a lot of cases unless somebody has reported it. And Jessica actually in the comments just said, I thought the IP holder had to report infringement on trademarked items. And that's why Etsy has their reporting portal. But yeah. also you could proactively work with some of these bigger people like Disney to say, hey, let us use your trademark database API because you, you have to know that Disney knows who has the rights to sell their stuff and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. Right. They have a, an Excel spreadsheet somewhere at that giant mouse run organization that says, hey, Scott can sell Disney stuff. Chris can't. Right. To let us hook into that and do that. But is that the best use of their development resources? Maybe not. And so they are relying on people reporting those through the Etsy trademark portal. And when they do, if they give them all of the information that they need, it seems like a lot of those people are getting taken down. Right. We said one hundred and twenty three thousand reports, one point two million listings were taken down last year. That's kind of a drop in the bucket compared to the handmade policy violations. But that a lot of that comes out of 
the extra hoops that they have to jump through to be able to do an IP takedown because it's not their rules. They have to follow a very specific process. They have to verify the information. And if they don't get everything that they need or somebody challenges it on the back end, then they're kind of out of the loop, right? I, yeah. Again, just like the the enforcing their own policy thing, I don't know of a platform that's solved this 100%. Yeah. Amazon has done a much better job over the last few years. And I think yep. using that model to say, hey, if you're putting Aladdin in your thing, even if it's just check here, if you're sure you're allowed to sell this. And if we suspend this listing because we get an IP takedown, it'll cost you your account, right? Like give me a checkbox like that and it'll speed this entire process up. What is the easy, no nonsense advice to avoid the IP violation. Well, obviously, <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to sell stuff that you know is trademarked or that's copyrighted or uh, that is owned by a company like Disney. Like the obvious, uh, you know, a TV series that's blowing up like Yellowstone was. Like basically, common sense. Taylor Swift, who's been known to go after sellers.